Hi again, guys. We are looking at revising some of the financial concepts that you've learned so far in grade 10. So we're looking at uh, financial growth. We were talking about simple interest and we've moved on to a compound interest example just before the break. So in this example, we were told that Phil wants to invest 20,000 Rand, a compound interest rate of 6% per annum, and we want to know how much money will he have at the end of five years? So we noted all the variables that we've been given and we see that we need to work out the value of A. So what we will do, once we've got all the variables, we substitute into the formula. So A will be equal to P, which is 20,000. Sometimes you might, while we're talking about 20,000, sometimes you might see this symbol or well, this letter K, K stands for 1,000. So 20K is read as 20,000. So just out of interest, into 1 plus I, which is 0, 0,06, all to the power of 5. And then it's just a simple matter of substituting that into your calculator, and you will see that at the end of five years, Phil is now 6,764 Rand richer than when he started out five years ago with this investment. That is a straightforward application of the compound interest formula. Just as we saw in simple interest, depending on what variables you have, you can work out any of the unknown variables in the question. Okay, so let's talk about how simple interest compares to compound interest. With simple interest, we know that only the original investment will earn interest if we are talking about an investment. But with compound interest, the original investment and the interest earned on it, both will earn interest. So I want to show you an interesting graphic where we compare simple interest and compound interest over the same term, the same initial amount, and the same interest rate and see how the two compare. Of course, we know that simple interest is always a straight line graph and compound interest will be a, an increasing exponential shaped function. Okay, so let's have a look at how these two compare. And the one we want is that one. Okay, so as you can see, the simple interest graph is the one in pink and the compound interest is the one in blue. You can certainly see the distinct shape of the compound interest graph uh, moving up, increasing exponential, exponentially. And the simple interest graph is a straight line graph. So if I were to graph and draw a straight line across the pink bars, um, you will see that it maps with a constant change. Okay, so have a look at your initial amount, which is uh, 3,400 Rand. The interest rate is exactly the same. It's at 13.2%, and we're looking at a period of 12 years. Now you can see how much more growth you are getting on the compound interest than you are on the simple interest. So if I were to invest at simple interest of 13.2% over 12 years, you will see that the value that I will get out, and you cannot quite make out the numbers there, but if, if you look across on your screen, and if we were able to draw a line um, tracking to that and matching up to that line, and you could of course work it out using your formula, you will see that that value is just under 10,000 Rand. But in the same period, you can see that your compound interest will be just under 15,000. So there's definitely a huge difference in your money when it's uh, invested on a compound interest rate versus a simple interest rate, okay? And of course, if you change your interest rate, you will be able to see that change even bigger. And if you change your term, we will see that even more substantially, okay? So the longer you're going to invest that money at a compound interest rate, the higher your, your um, accumulated amount is going to be much higher than simple interest. As you can see, your, your pink graph just uh, if you were to draw a line and make that those pink bars into a pink graph, you will see that it is a straight line and your compound interest graph giving you an increasing exponential graph and you will see quite distinctly, hopefully you can see as I can see on my screen, the straight line division between the two, um, the two bars, the compound interest bars and the simple interest graph. All right. 
Okay, guys, so that's what I wanted to just show you there. Let's just go back to our lesson now. And just so that you understand how the two um, concepts differ. All right. The next thing we want to talk about now is inflation. As I mentioned to you before, inflation is calculated using the compound interest formula. So let's talk about it a little bit. Every year, the value, the cost of things increase. We know that the value of items increase, brand new items, they increase. So this type of increase in a bag of goods, a bag of household goods, is what we call inflation. Inflation is the average increase in the price of goods each year, and we use a percentage to represent inflation. The inflation, um, as we are currently talking to you now, during the time of COVID and the coronavirus, the inflation rate in South Africa is relatively low compared to what it used to be in previous years. It has now dropped under 5%. We're looking at about, I think, currently 4.3% as we are uh, filming this lesson. But um, it used to be a lot higher in previous years. But obviously, the pandemic has had a huge impact on what people can afford to buy and the demand for the items. And all of these things affect demand, affects inflation, okay? And how much consumers have to spend obviously changes dramatically when something like a pandemic happens. Now, since the rate of inflation increases year on year generally, it is calculated using the compound interest formula. So let's say bread costs 17 Rand for a loaf right now. How much will it cost in four years' time if the average rate of inflation is 6% per annum? Of course, inflation is changing all the time, so we're just using an average rate here of 6% per annum. So to work it out, we say, well, the initial value of bread is 17 Rand, and we're looking at a period of four years, and the inflation rate, which is our interest rate here, is 0 0.06, 6% is 6 divided by 100. We want to find out what the final amount will be. Okay, so substituting into our compound interest formula, P is 17, 1 plus 0, 0, 0.06 is 1, 0, 0.06, and that's over a period of four years. Okay, so let's put that into our calculator and see what we get. Oopsie, we don't want the graph anymore, we want the calculator. There we go, and we've got 17 times by one. Please guys, remember that whatever calculator you are using, make sure that you know the steps to work out financial calculations so that you don't get stuck in your exams when you're looking at the calculator for the first time. All right, so we see that in four years time, we should be paying about 21 Rand and 46 cents for a loaf of bread. All right, so we can see the impact that inflation will have just on the cost of bread in four years time. Okay, so inflation, a big section, um, not a big section, a big concept that relies on that big section called compound interest. Something else that you do in grade 10 that you do need to be aware of in the financial world, in the real world, is something called Forex or the foreign exchange rate. Now, as we know, different countries all have their own currencies. If you are in the United States of America, you're using dollars. If we are in England, we are using the pound. And if we are somewhere in Europe, we are going to be using the euro. So those, in fact, are the most common currencies that you will come across the British pound, the US dollar and the euro. So changes in the cost of oil and so on, and we're not going to go into details, but all of that affects the currency and it affects what the South African Rand is worth. So let's have a look at a quick example. Okay, so let's say study the following exchange rate uh, table. We've got the United Kingdom. We see that in pounds here, the exchange rate to the Rand is 21 Rand 54. In other words, one pound is going to cost you 21 Rand 54. It is extremely expensive to travel through the UK. The United States, the dollar currently sitting at 16 Rand 15. So in other words, one dollar will cost you 16 Rand and 15 cents. So in South Africa, the cost of a new car is 260,000 Rand. In England, it costs 
12,200 pounds, and in the USA, you're looking at $15,900. In which country is the car the most expensive? Now, just as you deal with any units, they have to be in the same unit for you to compare them. So if I'm looking at dollars, pounds, and rands, I cannot do a direct comparison until I com uh, convert them all to the same uh, currency. So what I'm going to do here is convert the euros, uh, not the euros, the dollars, dollars and the pounds to rands and then look at comparing it to what the value of the car is in rands in South Africa. So if we're looking at pounds to rands, they said one pound is 20 rand, 21 rand and 54 cents and the car costs 12,200 pounds. So therefore what I would do is I'd times one by 12,200. So what I do to one side of the equation, I do to the other. And so I times both sides by 12,200, 12, and I see that the car will cost 260, an equivalent of 262,788 rand. Similarly, convert from dollars to rand. One dollar costs 16 rand 15, times both sides by 15,900, which is the cost of this car. And we see that in the US, the car costs 256,000 rand 785 okay so therefore if we now compare the cost remember in south africa it was 260,000 262,000 just over in um in uh, england and then we see that in the us it was just over 256,000 so in fact the car is cheapest in the us and it is the most it costs the most in england using that very high exchange rate all right, guys, so that concept, foreign exchange rates, it is something that is quite important for grade 10. Make sure you understand how to do the conversions between the different currencies. Guys, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time.